John here guys and today we're talking about the Recon, the HGLRC news flagship line uh, and this is in collaboration with Dave C. Dave, 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 Dave. Dave. Yes! <laughs> Remember the Flywoo Explorer? That was the darling of FPV just a few months ago. This four inch micro long range formula that took the drone market by storm. Well, this is based on Dave C's other prototype design, the mini long range. I had early prototype access to this and built up my own version of this. And I personally like the five inch formula a lot better than the four inch formula. And that's because I don't just want to fly for a long time. Yes, the extra flight time is a welcome bonus, but I want the power on top to be able to freestyle. And now that we have this DJI FPV digital system, you can get very usable footage out of the DVR from it. And you don't necessarily need an action camera, although both of these can carry one. In fact, this one, the uh, 3D printed holder up here comes equipped with a little GoPro style screw on mount and you can use that to carry, you could carry a full size GoPro. I'm not gonna do that. I don't recommend you do that, but this would absolutely be great for a naked GoPro, a SMO camera. How can you have some more if you haven't even had any yet? I haven't had anything yet. So how can I have some more of nothing? Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. Or the Insta360 Go. All of these would look great. Now, this is a marvel of just how far the FPV community has come. Its very existence is just something that really shows how far we've come, how many options we have. This isn't just somebody in a lab throwing um, spitballing spitballs onto a wall and seeing what sticks and shipping it out the door. This is taking a designer, Dave C in this case, and he's not just a frame designer. He is a fully integrated a flight solution designer. He's an innovator. He's not just a reviewer like some of the other people on YouTube are. He came up with this formula, put together a full recipe, gave you the tune, gave you the parts that you could put your own together. But what if you don't really want to do that? What if you just want to buy it and be able to take advantage of all of the theories that he's packed into this thing, all of the design principles and get it for a low price? Yes, you could go to one of the bespoke boutique builders and get one of their models, but you're going to end up paying a little bit more. What if you just want exactly what he has described in his design sessions that he lets you participate in on YouTube, then here it is, folks. Here it is. This is using HGLRC's um, it's the Titan F7 uh, flight controller with a 30 amp ESC on board. It has the Nebula Pro. This is the first bind and fly that I know of that's using the Nebula Pro. That is incredible high frame rate footage from the DJI system uh, with the same lens on board, but it's five grams less. So you're saving a little bit of weight there. Some of that weight though does go to the extra accessories on board. This comes fully set up and configured with your GPS on board, as well as a battery buzzer that has its own internal battery in there. So if you were to crash somewhere far out in the oblivion, not only would you have access to that GPS data, but you would also have this buzzer that would start chirping in a shriekingly loud manner. When I was setting this up upstairs, uh, my wife sent me a message saying, what in the shit is that damn beeping that you have going up there? Those are the shrinking eels. They but that beeping is going to help you find it if you ever crash it in the woods somewhere. Um, so, it looks like HGLRC has followed his... Uh, frame formula exactly. I still have one of these frames and I've compared it in exactly the same. It uses the little bike bolts uh, to hold itself together. It's such an awesome design right there. 
But in addition to that, it also has a little pivoting uh, TBS crossfire mount. You can see it rotates right here, so you can put it in a vertical position if you are gonna be going on that max long range. Like I said, this is equipped for long range. It has HGLRC's long antenna out here that will also give you long range reception no matter what direction you are flying. It's just great. It's just absolutely great. This uses HGLRC's new Aeolus motors that are a 2004, 3000 kV size. And it is using the same prop that I love to use on this form factor, which is a very special prop, the Jim Fan 5125. It gives you two sets of those. Um, that's fantastic. I mean, the build looks immaculate. It looks quite good. They've done a great job on here. They've done a great job designing mounts for all of the accessories as well as this mount right here. They've done a great job at giving you the long range mount. See, I would have done something lazy like just zip tie it to the arm uh, or to the back right here. This is truly a long range option. So I love that they've done that for you. See, that's the thing with getting one of these binding plies. A lot of time they take some of the guesswork out, but they don't necessarily give you things in in the formula and the orientation in the mounting positions that you would choose but by Dave C dictating exactly how they build this you can have all that done for you so you're truly just binding this going out and flying it it has Dave C's pids on board it has his tune on board it flies incredible how does this feel compared to the Beta FPB 1805 2550 KV motors that I use on my, my formula? This has a bit more punch. Um, it really does. I think the 1805 did have a slightly bit more power in the very, very like bottom 25% of the throttle range, but anything above that, this is more speed and more power. Uh, it has very good tossability and it has great recovery control. When you do those dives, when you want to send this thing sailing through the air, and my goodness, how quiet it is. It's so quiet. These light builds are quiet. When it comes down, you can really do that nice, smooth recovery. So if you do have an action camera on here or you're just using the DJI DVR footage, you're going to get some really usable, smooth, fun to fly footage. Now, how does it compare battery wise? My version with those smaller beta FPV motors got 11 minutes cruising. This one, not as efficient, guys. That is using my recommended battery for these type of setups. I love to use the Tattoo 1050 milliamp 4S battery. Yes, people do like to use those uh, Lylion 18650 packs to fly these. I do have one on the way that I'm gonna see how long it flies for, but I, I want to use a cheap battery, I want to use a small battery, I want to use a light battery, and I want to use a battery that has lipo power for those punches whenever I want to do them. So that got me 11 minutes on my version of this, that got me 11 minutes on the Flywoo Explorer, on this it got me 8 minutes. A very respectable 8 minutes, a very fun 8 minutes, a very smooth 8 minutes. Now pushing this hard, I also did a hard freestyle flight with this. Um, just doing tons of punch out, tons of power loops and stuff like that. Um, pushing that on that same 1050 milliamp 4S pack got me three minutes. So still respectable. Um, I think you could actually fit a little bit larger of a LiPo on there. It says that you can fit a 1300. If you did that, you could easily get that 11, 12 minutes of flight time. It's got the power to carry it. So, I mean, why not? I just can't believe that a few short months ago, I had these pieces of carbon cut and sent to me um, the prototype, and now there is a fully realized version of this. Uh, it's just unbelievable. You know, you get one of these binding flies from another company, and it's kind of close to the vision, but they get some things right, some things not always as right. This is exactly Dave C's plan. There is also a 6S version, but to me, I would use the 4S. It has an XT60, not an XT30 installed. It comes with two sets of those props, like I said, a couple of straps. It has a naked GoPro mount right here for you to be able to screw on. I believe this also can hold the smoke. How can you have some smoke? Uh, stickers, wiring diagrams, all of that good stuff, and a pair of straps. So, we checked out the Roma, which is basically the three inch version of this formula. 
we checked out the Flywheel Explorer that is the four inch. And now we checked out the mini long range, which is the five inch. Which of these should you get? And how does it compare to the Shocker Light? Well, let's break it down for you. If you want maximum, maximum, small, lightweight, park flying, go with something three inch like this, but for really not much more weight. Um, similar tossability, maybe not quite as much. The least amount of punch, but the most amount of flight time, go with the Flywheel Explorer. Now these arms are very thin, so this does not have a lot of crashability at all, but it has the maximum efficiency on this model right here. You could also build my version of the Mini Long Range and get uh, not quite this amount of efficiency, but a little more than this. And so they do sell this whole thing minus the motors. So you could buy this and put your own motors on there if you wanted to use those beta. Now, if you still wanna be able to long range, you still wanna be able to cruise, you still wanna have good flight times, maybe not care about the max flight times, but, you wanna leave some of your variables that you have to play with. See, you always have a certain number of like skill points, right? Pretend, pretend like you're setting up a character in an RPG. Um, you can assign certain skills to these quads. If you wanna leave some of those skill points for your power, then you wanna go with the mini long range. Now, you still do get a really tiny little bit of props in view with that, just as a note. You'll see it in the footage. How does the Shocker Light compare? Well, the Shocker Light, if you had those same set of skill po points and you wanted to prioritize durability, crashability, um, a little bit higher than say lightweight and long range, then you would go with the Shocker Light. So Shocker Light is, they're all kind of really good flight times, really good performing. Um, Shocker Light is gonna have a little bit more of that freestyle traditional feel because it's just the way that the um, thing is designed. Um, so that's kind of what it's all about. If you want a little more long range, but still good freestyle, this one, if you want even more, long range, a little less power, but more flight time, Flywheel Explorer. Um, but I just, design wise, I love this thing. I love, love this little hoop at the front that protects the camera, this TPU printed camera holder. I love that they give you this battery pad. I mean, I just love this thing, guys. And if you don't wanna have to do your own build, if you don't want to have to set up and configure and wire up and do all the setup for this GPS, if you don't want to have to mess with wiring up all these extra accessories like the buzzer and whatnot, um, instead of spending five, six hours on the bench, you can just pop up 300 and bucks and some change, have it all done for you, spend your time that you saved on flying. What are you gonna be doing uh, for your lightweight builds? This is about 225 grams. With that 1050 milliamp battery, it's closer to 350 grams. So it's really not gonna meet the future criteria, but I don't. I think that's okay. We wanna start trending in that direction. We wanna tr start experimenting with getting smaller and smaller, but we have 30 months. So let's enjoy finding out the information that we need in order to achieve those lightweights. Let's start doing that today, but we don't necessarily have to have it be all the way there. Um, this is an excellent step in that direction. What are you gonna do? Are you a fly rule explorer kind of guy? Are you a shock or light guy because you actually wanna freestyle it? Um, do you not even like these and just wanna do like a shock or tank and get a full size freestyle? This is an absolutely great park flyer. I was flying around the park. I didn't realize that there was something, somebody there um, in a little gazebo that I kind of fly by. And I saw them, by the time I saw them, I was probably 20 feet away. So I mean, I wasn't like right next to them, but I immediately went the other way because I don't want to bother anybody at a park. And I don't think they even noticed. This thing is so quiet. Not bad. Thanks guys.